Hey YouTube. So about a month ago, I signed up for a website called Daily Goodie Box because they said that they would send you boxes full of different free products to try out. I'm like, oh, that sounds cool. I might not use everything in there. Maybe something like caffeine or something I don't eat. But that sounds cool. <coughs> I will give it a try. And so I went ahead and signed up for it. I haven't received any goodie boxes yet. This is the first thing I've gotten. But then one day I get an email saying that you get a free smart vacuum, just pay shipping and handling. And the website that this was being listed on, that was recommended by Daily Goodie Box, <coughs> seemed a little bit sketchy. But I did a little bit digging around. I couldn't find much about this website other than one other website saying, here's a few points about why this is like 33% sketchy or whatever. But nothing solid, no reviews. But I, so then I started looking up Daily Goodie Box, and they had pretty positive reviews. Although I found you need to be like active on their social media and um, being like, hey, commenting, but something relevant to the post, not just, I want this, give me free stuff. And then they picked like 25, maybe 50 plus people to receive a goodie box. So, um, seeing that it was valid, I went ahead and ordered this thing, and a word of caution for you. Uh, first of all, they had a weird thing where I could save $2 if I paid with MasterCard and paid $5.99 shipping instead. And they claim this is normally $70. And I w but I went through the process of ordering this, and it's basically like, would you also like to have a f the exercise program at this value included? Uh, nope, I'm checking that box in. Would you like to order another one of these vacuums at, uh, not free, but at a discounted price? No, thank you, and just order it. Somewhere in there, I didn't see where, but somewhere in there was a subscription to their site, which, as I was making this order, I remembered privacy.com. Nope, this is not sponsored by privacy. I just remembered hearing it from a few other YouTubers, and like, oh, I could make a card that would only be able to be charged once for only the amount that I specify. And that way things would be all safe. And I'm very glad that I did, because I randomly noticed a... $67.99 or something, some $60 plus dollar charge on my one-time use card, which uh, was only, could be only done for $8. They don't let you specify the, what's the word? They don't let you specify the amounts um, less than a dollar, in my experience. And so I sent an email to the uh, online store, because this is like not just this item, it's like a whole online store with cheap products from China. Which, interestingly enough, uh, this says they are somewhere in a P.O. box in Arcon, Ohio. I don't know if that's like a, a maybe drop shipping with what? I don't know if that's like a U.S. part logistics where they get stuff sent out that way, or if they actually are based in there. But it's like one of the many online stores you see with cool items that are really neat and you should totally buy. And they're not Amazon, but they're trying to be or whatever. I don't know. So, uh, it was a little sketchy because of that, but when contacting them, I found out that you get, after your initial purchase, you get a three-day free trial of their website. And then, you have to pay subscription. So if you're doing this, uh, make sure you can cancel your trial or use a privacy.com card. That can be a one-time purchase. Again, not sponsored at all. I was thinking about doing this video a few days ago, but my vacuum finally arrived, and so here's a perfect time to do it. Uh, I have opened it up. And there are a few initial spots, first of all, or thoughts. First of all, here's the top. Um, this is where the dirt goes. There's not like a rubber flap or anything like our, we have a, a vacuum downstairs that does have flaps and stuff. That's like a $700 vacuum. And it's got way more features than this obviously does. So the lid just goes on like this, but uh, it kind of falls off, I think. Well, I can't quite tell, but if there were actually supposed to be clips on the plastic, it looks like they kind of broke off, because it looks like a bit rough, like the plastic's maybe broken a bit, but I don't hear anything shaking around in there, so, you know, I could probably put a little bit of nail varnish on there, and it would be a little bit thicker and stick in better. Now, there is this filter piece on top here. The filter piece does come off, but I'd be very careful because they have just barely enough of whatever this filter material is to fill the thing, 
And so I think getting it on and off would be a little bit tricky. Yeah, right there it's, yeah, right there it's come up a bit on this one corner. So if you do have to replace this, I mean, I'm sure you could find a similar material and cut a little wider piece out of it. But it does have a filter over the motor, and while well, that's off, I can show you. It's the simple, I don't know what type of motor that is, but it's a simple spinning vacuum sucky type motor. I mean, this is a vacuum after all. And it was, uh, it was and I think the discounted price, if you wanted more than one, was like $40 or something. Alright, actually, I'm just gonna have to... Oh, you can put the piece... O oh, yeah, you can put the piece over the hole and then put the ring down on there. Okay, that actually works a little better than I was trying to do it. Okay. So, yeah. Um, I haven't put it on yet, but it does also have these Velcro straps here with uh, sticky pads. On the back of them, oh, a little piece of fluff came off of their mop here. I mean, this is cheap. And then, oh, also, um, these, I'm not going to try and get them off again, but these, uh, these sweeper pieces were not installed when I got it, and I had to put them on. They just fit on some square pegs. Actually, I will try, because I want to show you guys the battery that this thing comes with. It, um... But first of all, oh yeah, so these, these do pop back off again. They look like this. It's very... Interestingly enough, there are like... more spokes than there are bristles. I wonder if they just didn't melt through and poke bristles, but they make models that have more. I don't know, I think three is probably enough, but this will get a side-by-side -side comparison with our expensive, I forget the brand, but our expensive vacuum downstairs, which sometimes decides to act stupid, but... Take this off. The battery inside here is a Hongli copyright battery, and it's not your standard double A battery. It's about the same size, but the specifications will tell us. And I'm going to put in a double A battery to see if. Okay, so it will actually fit. Will it? Okay, yeah, so you're not running this off of double A's. I, I turned it on earlier and it did spin faster. So it, it tries, but it's not enough. Because it does, in the instructions, say, I think about 3.7 volts. But let's quickly get to what this claims, and then I'm going to set it on my floor and turn it on, like, vacuuming for the first time to give my initial impressions, and I'll let it run for a bit while I do some other things here. So we've got the white side, we've got the black side. Uh, so we got suitable for living, suitable for, colon, living room, bedroom, hallway, kitchen, etc. Multifunction, smart sweeper in that corner there. Enjoy life effortless. Should be effortlessly, but yes. So it's got a start button, USB charging, noise reduction, obstacle avoidance, uh, strong suction, and filter box. I'm not sure about the strong suction based on my initial powering on, but I will give it a try again just to see. Yeah, this is the ZB230A Smart Sweeper, which they don't specify on their website which one it is. Oh yeah, they've got more specs on the side of the box, which are similar to, they're the same as the instructions it looks like. Uh, working noise is 55 decibels, working voltage is 3.7 volts slash 1200 milliamps. So it's a 1200 milliamp battery, product weight is 500 grams, charge time is 3 hours, specifications is, uh, that's just the size, so it's 220 by 220 by 620 millimeters, working hours is 100 minutes. The manual says working hours is 100 minutes slash 30 minutes, so maybe it has some sort of a timer where it runs in different um, sections. Oh, they've got a checkbox on the side for whether it's black or white. It's not very often that I see this stuff actually checked, but also that little insert tab was just completely missing from the box. And oh, there are some warning stuff on them. Wow. Got some uh, Indian writing, maybe? I don't know. 
whatever whatever that type of writing is, you have that there. Choking hazard, stuff not suitable for children, made in China. Product image, please prevail in kind. I have no idea what that means. I know it's obviously bad English. The thing with the charging, though, is I was confused because, um, like, there's no charge port on It's not here where they're supposed to include an external charger. So I was thinking when I call up their, uh, the support number that I was given and be like, hey, I would like to cancel my subscription, then, um, I can also be like, where's the charger I'm supposed to include them? But no, they do have a micro USB charging port right there. And let's take a look at this cable length really quickly and then I'll turn it on and I'm gonna get it sweeping just as it is before I do any nail varnish because it's gonna have to dry. Yeah, it's an okay length for this kind of a thing. Uh, you'd have to definitely put this on a table and, you know, charge it that way. But let's pop our top cover on and then what you do is you just push the button in. And it's like, you have to push it in just right, and then it goes, oh. Now also, um, ooh, I was feeling some air coming out of the back there. It doesn't sound very loud, but maybe it has decent suction for the volume and it is supposed to be quiet. With, uh, it's a little trickery they're doing here, but with the, uh, the grooves on the side here, to me, that kind of looks like this is the front and this would be the plate that bumps into the wall and says oh i need to turn although i don't think that it really does that also oh wow my goodness that thing is just spinning round and round and i'm not very hopeful for this let's get a few things moved off the floor that are big objects you wouldn't want a vacuum to pick up and give this a little try. And that's again, without the little mop pad thingy that you can stick on there. I mean, it's cool that they include that, I guess. Features, whatever, but let's give this a try. All right, so as we can see, my studio has clearly accumulated a decent level of dirt right there. And it is in need of a cleaning, which this vacuum has come at just the right time. That's a very obvious line of dirt from the door. Put the vacuum down and... Just gonna go in circles. Huh. It looks. Oh! So it did do. Okay. Um. Let's actually give ourselves a little more zoom in. So it is kind of sort of doing something. I. Uh, that's not great. I wonder if it's like on a timer type, maybe every once in a while, oh, rotate where the, uh, cause that sounds like a cheap way to do it to me, is you rotate, you flip where it's turning, like, every so many minutes, why are you just, okay, it's trying to do some, are you stuck on something? I'm glad I only paid like five dollars for this, this was I think worth the curiosity, and who knows, maybe it'll do just barely good enough that I can use in every once in a while cleaning. There is a slight smell, like something was overworked and burning. I don't think anything got into our filter. There is dirt on the filter. To its credit, it has actually sucked up. I'm just gonna move this dirt off the filter and see if maybe the filter was just getting like, oh, I can't suck in enough air, help me, help me, I'm gonna burn out. Cause that will happen, I actually accidentally did that once to our in-house vacuum, which we have too. Oops. Let's set you back down, get you running again, see if it works the filter thing. So it is kind of sucking up some dirt, but it's definitely not getting this space as good as I would like. I mean, it can be a decorational shelf piece. That's not the greatest compliment for this, I don't know. I just think it was kind of cool and satisfying my curiosity, also doing a service to anyone on the internet who might be wondering, and I was thinking it was going to be uh, a much better product than this. I don't know, yeah. I was a little naive. 
Especially when I should have realized that just only seventy dollars is like the actual supposed actual price that you pay full for this. So far, I am not really impressed. It's smaller than I was thinking, because like even though there's stuff right there, eventually there may not be stuff right there. Actually, there's probably going to be a shelf right there. But I was thinking that like our full-size vacuum wouldn't be able to fit back there. That's a robot. So what about this one? Oops. See if we can get it to do anything else. Like. So it does have some kind of a, maybe it's a touch thing, like, what if I just barely lightly, Oh, No, so it's not light touch. I, ooh. There's also, again, that smell. I don't know if I'm just smelling plastic, or... So it, it requires a harder touch. It does have some kind of a sensor. And I guess they've gotten rid of moving parts necessity by having a much stronger tap required to um, actuate the thing. Or, well, not maybe not stronger, but like you're not pushing in an actual bump thing. You're just relying on probably some kind of a sensor to detect the motion. Okay, if only it would go in a straighter line, that would really help this thing a lot, because you've done a pretty good job over there, bud, but can we, uh, can we go back to where the dirt is? I'm gonna move the tripod leg in the way, so that I can hopefully... No, I don't want you to go under there. Not there, okay? Not there either. I need you to go back by where you started, all right, bud? You didn't finish that spot. Oh, there we go. There we go. Is it gonna get the... Kind of. Actually, no, yeah, it did get the dirt. It did, it did. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna... We'll cut here after a little bit more of it just doing its thing. You know, actually I should try speeding up the clip. So we're just gonna record for a little while longer and speed up. And I'm just gonna let it do its its own Okay, I'm feeling this long enough of it running around being kind of stupid looking. Where are you going now? Are you gonna... you gonna finish over where we started yet? Gonna, maybe it's gonna come up here and get some... I wanna see how good this suction actually feels, cause... There is air coming out of the back. There's slight, but let's feel underneath the bottom. I don't know, it probably wouldn't pick up a whole lot. Or maybe I should make like a really dirty spot. And, a little bit of dust coming out there too because it doesn't have the flap. Um, yeah. So far it feels about five dollars or so. Maybe it actually does cost a little more to manufacture this thing. I don't know. Alright, we are looking at our smart family of uh, cleaning devices. Smart in quotes because the new guy on the left. Um, so the iRobot Bravio Jet is a automatic mopper thing, although it's not entirely automatic, it doesn't automatically go out on sessions and stuff. It's kind of like this thing where, um, I don't know exactly how to use it, it does have this battery in the back here, and then with the battery installed, cleaning solution put in somewhere in there, everything's set right, you push the clean button and it can go around and mop a certain space. I don't think it has, I don't know if it has any smart mapping technology, there is some kind of a little sensor looking thing on the front, and this is an actual like a, a bump plate, much like uh, this one has here. I'll have to ask my mom more about that in a segment, because I will want to put the mop thing on and see what I think about the mop thing being on this vacuum here, but our, um, a Nito, yeah. A Nito vacuum does have a bump plate. This thing has oh, so many more features than this does. 
Uh, it's got like you can have it map different rooms of your house and set schedules for when to do each room. And it's got like I think radar on the top and all this stuff. It has an app that comes with it. Uh, it's definitely not perfect though, and this is something that I've kind of wanted to do on its own as a video, but I'm gonna tell a story about when I watched this thing be royally stupid once. So the dirt has to come up and around in from here into this, I think, potentially, I don't know, maybe because the vacuum is light enough, the new one, uh, it's not too easy to dump upside down and empty. But this contains the dirt a little better, as you can see it's got a scrubber, it's got uh, flaps on there. This is going to be better at holding the dirt, as opposed to just the open hole on the bottom of the vacuum, which to its credit is angled. So this thing is in some ways better, but a really quick comparison here, listen to this. Now listen to this. Oh, make way! And I don't know exactly what area it's gonna try and orient itself to, do or clean. But, there's a sample of the noise that Nito makes. It's obviously a lot louder, but it's not actually too loud. Although you wouldn't want this thing running when you're watching a TV show or whatever. Now let me show you a little bit of the shortcomings that Nito has. The main thing being the radar bump on top sometimes means that it can get stuck under some pieces of furniture. I think that used to be a different one. So, I'm not gonna specifically show that one getting stuck, but I will just see. Will this thing, will you go under the couch? Looks like maybe not. Let's see here. Come on. Come on, bud. No. So that is a little too, um, try one more time here. No. So that flap is a little too, uh, too, too sensitive to this, but it does obviously fit, so, you know, you could lift that up, but then it would just be stuck under the couch for who knows how long. And I'm going to reenact the, uh, Nito vacuum, that one experience that I had. Uh, I haven't noticed the vacuum or paid as much attention to it lately. It, my mom said she did a lot of research and it was the best option, so I am kind of trusting her. Although, back when I was paying more attention to it, I wondered sometimes. Because I think right now we have it set to run at night too, but oftentimes, I can use this one for an example, would go under here, and it would just get like, you know, stuck under there. My mom was under the impression of, you free it, and then let it go home. And maybe sometimes you have to, like if it does get stuck under the couch, it will beep, and it doesn't specifically say where it is, it just beeps and hopefully you hear it. But also our house wouldn't be too hard to find it if it did completely die. The app doesn't tell you either, which it should. All it can do is you can look at it and see what it is last set to run. But it will sometimes go around here and just get stuck underneath the chairs and not be able to find its way back out, which is usually this side around here somewhere. And I'm under the impression of no, you don't help it because it needs to learn like a little child how to actually get out and you can't specifically teach it by moving the stuff out of the way. So you just let it do its thing and figure out. There's its charging station all the way over there. Here's the couch over here, and yeah, I'm going to be the vacuum, so here I am, I'm Nito, and I'm trying to go home, and it's very clear that it was going home, and it's not finding it, and finally, it came all the way over here, and it's like, nope, mm -hmm. okay, here it is, this is my home, I'm going to go plug into charge, and there's nothing there. Okay, well, what about... Yeah, let's, let's find out where I am in the house. Okay, I know, I know where I am now. I'm gonna go... <laughs> There's nothing back there. I'm not... 
And if I remember correctly, I think at this point it maybe did be like, come back out one more time and go all the way back there. But I was, I, I was just like, what are you doing? How are you, you, you no, over there. I don't know, but it is nice. And it has been beneficial and let's just empty out what this does have so far. So lift up on the thing. There's quite a bit of dirt in there. And yeah, it, it does. There's got a little bit of fuzz sticking to it. Yeah, it's... Okay, there's still quite a bit of dirt stuck in there, which in my opinion isn't great, but if I were to, you know, empty out our needle here, right there, I mean, okay, yeah, the amount of dirt, the amount of dirt coming out is more, it's also had more to suck up, so that will be in a later test. Or we'll see that better. But the amount of dirt that actually stays inside, uh, probably about the same. So, there, neither one wins on having less dirt left just stuck to the plastic sides of the unit. But, yeah. Okay, so, uh, in the earlier section, this brush I had accidentally left downstairs. Uh, it's got a weird hand thing on the front, and it is, uh, oops, it's just a little plastic uh, brushy brush that I I was able to use to brush off some dust in there and when I emptied this out for a second time in it yeah, there's a little more dust right there it it works as a brush like that and um, I'm about to plug this in for the first time see if it has any indicator lights so I'm just gonna plug this in and get my first time reaction of juicing that okay let's plug in I am not seeing is there a, an indicator. Hmm. I am not seeing any sort of an, an, an indicator if you need to indicate to me that it's uh, doing. Okay, so I don't know. I, I'm doubtful it was a different wall brick. I think I just had to get the cable in there just right. But it does show red that it's charging. So, we are going to watch this get absolutely demolished by our Neato BotVac D7 in just a moment. That's a $700 robot vacuum. But first, I finally looked up the model number for this vacuum online for the first time, and I learned a few interesting things, like there were a few YouTube comments where people having trouble finding the charge port. It is pretty tricky to notice. And there's also a YouTuber by the name of John Chase who has the ZB230 smart vacuum. This is the ZB230A. It has cleaning cloth. That's the difference. His has a UV cleaning light. I think that sounds a little cooler and high tech, but also maybe a little, I don't know, if it's pointing at your floor, you're probably not gonna burn yourself with it. So I forget how much he paid for his, but his, I've only watched uh, the first of his two videos on it. His seemed to be doing about as good as mine. So eh, UV cleaning light versus this, which I called this a mop earlier, but I actually now know what it is based on like the one minute, 30 second long commercial for this vacuum. So I'll be able to show you what this thing really is for. And then, you know, I got looking at prices finally, and uh, there's one for like $5 on AliExpress with 230 shipping. And then there was one for like 40, almost $50 on Macari, no way. And then there was one that was a different brand of vacuum on Amazon for like $50. It looked about as cheap and simple as this one, but I just want to read something from there that I thought was kind of funny. Powerful, clear. Fix the particles and easily remove common household waste. And here's what they call common household waste. Hair, melon seeds, cookie crumbs, and small sandy soil. Like, what the heck? I, that's a really weird list of dust. Okay, so it didn't make any sense to me that you would just have a dry cleaning cloth on the bottom of your vacuum when it's supposed to be cleaning up already dry dirt and stuff and just wiping a dry cloth around on your floor isn't really gonna do a whole lot as far as cleaning it. 
And so I was going to compare it with our iRobot Bravio Jet, which earlier I called this like a sensor thing on the front. That's actually where it squirts out cleaning fluid. So, yeah, and then as per a suggestion from my mom, she said try with it dry, and then, you know, try with putting some cleaner on like I was thinking to use it kind of like a mop. But we don't need to compare it with this at all, because obviously we know this thing would win, and because I found out what it's actually for, and let me show you guys here. What it's actually for is if you, oops, spill a little bit of OJ up or other liquid on the floor, and then, yeah, I'm not, oh... Oh no, I'm not very impressed. It's gotten stuck on a thing there, but also as you can see it kind of just smeared the juices around. Let me get it off of this bump and let's try that. Nope, come on, turn you off. All right, you pointed at the juice, go straight, wipe up, kind of, sort of, come on turn, nope, turn. Turn. Don't be stuck on the floor. Go. Pull over the juice. There you go. I mean, I smell orange juice now. And it did pick up the juice a bit with this uh, cloth here. Let's just, let's just take this cloth off the thing and actually wipe up. I should have put it on a flat spot on the floor so I didn't have to worry about this groove here. So it... Yeah, yes, this whatever cloth is made out of does pick up juice, but it's not very good at that. And it needs to like run over it just right and be the right height. Okay, so I've got a little puddle of water down there now that I'm not going to be wasting some of my orange juice. And I'm kind of most interested to see if it ends up somehow like sucking up some of the water and causing problems inside. It's meant for just a little spill. Which, come on, turn around. I'm gonna, why are you, why are you just getting stuck on, what the heck? Well, let's see, um, okay. There is a little bit of moisture inside there now. Not a whole lot. I don't think this would, um, well, hmm. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna end up, like, sucking up so much moisture that you're gonna cause problems unless you're, like, I don't know, driving it through a flooded basement or something, but... Huh. Yeah, it, um... If we take the cloth off now... Yeah, it, uh... It doesn't like having a wet cloth to be stuck on the floor. So the cloth just gets it stuck and it's just not gonna run and do anything. So mopping up a little tiny wet spot with this is a no-no. And uh, so let's say that you do get this thing on there and you do let it do its moppy whatever to get up your spells and uh, yeah, okay. It's mostly washing out. You could definitely, you know, yeah, that, that worked. You could then, you could then, you know, let this dry out and put it on there just in case you have a wet spill. But again, it's just gonna get stuck on the floor and stop your vacuum from moving. Also, I did put a little bit of nail varnish on where the clips were supposed to be. That little bit didn't help. You need a lot more to make the lid stick on, but I just said whatever. So there's some dust that I've dumped out of the bag from our Kirby vacuum. That's just a regular tall human use vacuum, not the robot vacuum that we're going to compare this to. Can you pick up this little dust? Okay. I'm not very impressed, but that's kind of expect- nope. Come on. I want you to suck up the... There. Well, it got some of the dust. Our filter is a little bit covered. Let me clean that off. So I brushed off the filter, just in case that was making it not suck as good. I want to see if it can just get the stuff that's on the groove. Eh, okay. Okay. 
So it, it kind of sort of picked up some of the dust that's in here, but there's still ooh, quite a bit of dust that's in the groove and the filter's covered again. It So it picks up dust, but not very well. Let's watch it get destroyed. Yeah, even Nito sometimes is a dumb dummy. And I think I think Nito is actually being really dumb tonight. I have absolutely no idea why. Hey, it actually did. Okay, okay, so that's that's enough of that. Obviously, the $700 Nito performs a lot better than the $5 vacuum. And uh, there is still a tiny bit of dust inside of there. Maybe if Nito went over it a second time, I don't know. The dust that I got out of the vacuum bag was actually pretty fine. I don't know what it was from. So maybe both of these just don't have as good of suction. Well, obviously, I don't think this one even has as good of suction as the Kirby, but obviously that one doesn't. Is it a scam? Uh, well, they did actually send a vacuum, but then there was, I probably just missed the terms of service somewhere, I didn't think to read them, but there was the unknown to me subscription to their site, which was blocked by my one-time use privacy.com card. And I did get a few more reoccurring charges, but they were like increasingly less and less each time. And I think they've stopped trying to charge now. I did try and call the support number I was given one day to cancel, and it was taking a while, even though I said two minutes, and I'm like, here, push this button, so they call me back. They never called me back, so I don't know, if I see another charge on my card, I will try giving them a call, see if I can actually reach somebody that day, and, um, get my subscription canceled. But that's it for this little vacuum and the place that it came from. And, you know, again, it all started from Daily Goodie Box. They seem to be pretty legitimate from the other reviews that I've read online. But you may have a very different experience than I have. And, you know, maybe someday I'll actually get something from them by commenting on their Facebook or whatever. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, if you liked, leave a like down below. I know it was a little bit long, but there was a lot to cover. I tried to be quick about it. And um, it's not the normal thing I do. So if you're new here, go check out the other stuff that I've done on my channel. And see if you like that before you consider subscribing. Anyways, I'll see you guys in whatever's next. Bye!